It always seems when you are expected to be somewhere, something unexpected shows up. And here we are with a vol tire gauge warning. We're going to take care of that before we go ahead and pick up this package. I told him we'd meet him at 10. That's what he asked for. We're running really tight here. So let's see if we can pull this off. Hey, thanks for doing this, man. I had a flat tire. Really? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. We're back at the studio here. We're going to start this unboxing here. What a whirlwind here in the last 30 minutes. Left the house, ran into a low pressure gauge warning on my truck. Almost put us behind. UPS driver messaged me. He's like, where are you at? I got a day to get on. Met up with him. Thank you, uh, Nathan, for helping us through this. And we're back here. We're going to dive into this unboxing. We're going to get this product going and show you what it looks like. Well, Achievers, today we're going to talk about a new release product called the Amazon Kindle Fire Max 11. Whew. Come on, guys. Can we start like getting rid of the Max, the Pros, and all the numbers and just come up with something more unique and more fun? Like name it Zebra Edition or something like that. But anyway, with all of that being said, I was really intrigued by this device when I learned about it just two days ago. What intrigued me most about it, first off, is it runs OneNote and it now has a stylus. So for note takers, digital planners, this is a device I think that's really going to be an interest on the market space. And the price point also was very appealing. For less than 400 bucks, you get a keyboard, the device, and a stylus, which is really powerful. So with that being said today, guys, I am going to review this product as a first impressions. We're probably going to do a deep dive later after we used it for a few weeks, but we were browsing the internet and we just didn't feel like there was good content out there to help make a form decision for you. So with that being said, guys, we're going to jump in. We're going to look at the new Amazon Kindle Fire 11 Max. Whew. So stay with me. So first and foremost, the one thing I want to talk about is the actual design and form factor of the device. When we got this out of the box, one thing that was very intriguing was the overall layout of the device itself. In landscape, it definitely feels wider than most. And in portrait, it definitely feels narrower in most. Now, if I'm in a reading mode or if I'm looking to browse some pages with this, it does fit nice in my hand. It seems very stable, but yet it has a little bit of a weight to it. Traditionally, I wouldn't expect that. However, if I remove the cover of the keyboard, I lose quite a bit of weight. I've noticed when I add the keyboard and the back cover, it definitely adds some weight to the product. So some things that were unique about it is it does have a fingerprint reader, the volume, it's powered and charged by USB-C. It does have a slot here, maybe a SIM card or an expansion slot. Now we learned that you can actually get up to a terabyte of memory in this device. We got the model that has 64 gigabytes with ads. I don't know if I'm a big fan of the ads. I might pay the little extra dollars to unlock that, but for this display, it's gonna work pretty good. The other thing we noticed is it definitely does have the speakers on the front, a front facing camera, and then you can see that we have a camera on the back as well. So that is just kind of a look at the form factor. It does have the ability on the bottom where you can attach a keyboard, and we got the bundle pack that includes the keyboard, and they just pop in just like that, and allows you to utilize the keyboard. However, you have to install the back of this if you want to be able to set this keyboard up. Now the keyboard is not Bluetooth, so you can't array the device in a portrait position. It has to be in a landscape position when you're using it. Now, when I first started using the keyboard itself, I was really impressed by how well the mouse worked with the screen interaction. It was very smooth. I was able to navigate exactly where I wanted to go and the keys themselves have a good spring-like effect. So I could easily see myself typing on this for a period of time. It does have the ability to get Office on here. So if you wanted to do Word documents or emails, you definitely could seriously use this to type out some of those information with this keyboard. So first and foremost, Amazon has usually always been an e-reader device. I think this device kind of opens us up to a computing device that has e-reader technology. Now we covered the Amazon Scribe not too long ago and how they introduced e-ink technology to their platform. Well, now we have a colored Kindle 
with a stylus and we can get into the e-ink world. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. So we're gonna talk about how you can utilize this for digital planning and note taking. Well, one thing that really intrigued me about this device is they said that it can use Microsoft Office and then they mentioned it can use OneNote. And then when I saw the stylus, I got to think, hey, this could be right up my alley. This might actually be the first device that I get my spouse to utilize our planning system with. We went ahead and we installed OneNote from the app download store and we signed into OneNote and we went ahead and pulled in our actual planner. Now with OneNote, it's a very powerful app. It's universal in the sense that you can synchronize notebooks across Windows, Apple, and Android devices, and even some e-ink devices like the Onyx books. But what this allows you to do is if I take notes here, if I import media here, it's gonna synchronize across all those devices. So I can use my Kindle, take some notes, update some annotations of a document. When I get back to my desk, pow, it's right there for me to be able to continue taking my annotations and meetings and brainstorming my different ideas. All right, we're gonna start by just zooming in a little bit here and showing the functionality of the stylus. First and foremost, if you click on one of these pen tools, you have the ability to change the color and you can also change the thickness. So I can choose black and I can bring the thickness like so. And I can go ahead on the screen and write, Tom, Tom likes the fish. Now I have the option of using different shortcuts and having a a number of different pens, but I also have the ability to have highlighting. So I can click on a highlighting tool and I can choose yellow and I can go ahead and highlight that. Now at any given time, I can use the lasso tool and I can select that text and I can move it. I can scale and resize it. I can also have the ability to tap and copy this text where that is gonna be really powerful and I'm gonna show you how you can actually copy your to-dos from one day to the next. Now we have the ability to go ahead and race and we can go ahead and race a stroke like such. And it'll take away that entire line. We can use the undo key and bring that back. But on the pen itself, there is this optional button. If I click and hold on that, it allows me to race that text just as well. So those are the basic functions of the actual stylus when it comes to handwriting. One thing that I wanna show you that is really cool that we learned by surprise is if I click on stop and then tap on the screen, my keyboard shows up. Now this is a split keyboard. I can bring this together and make it a full keyboard, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my stylus and write Tom likes to fish. And here within the application of OneNote, we are able to convert that handwritten note to text. This is very, very familiar to Apple's scribe feature that they have. This here though is gonna allow us to do it in this particular app. And I can go ahead then and just tap back on the drawing tool and my keyboard disappears and I can go back and I can choose to highlight that. So if you're somebody that maybe doesn't have the best handwriting or you wanna have some text, I often find sometimes if I'm in a meeting and I wanna go right back to my desk and copy those notes and send them off, I prefer to have them in text format. Well. I like to use my stylus when I'm handwriting because it creates a more of a mental engagement with the paper per se, and that allows me to have the benefit of both. So there's a quick look on how you can use this for handwriting. Now, I told you when it comes to our planner, I can jump into a particular day of the week. So I'm gonna jump into actually today, which is the 14th, and you're gonna see I have a handful of to-dos to do on here. Let's just say I didn't get those done. I can use this lasso tool. I can select those, I can copy them, and then I can go ahead and jump to the next page, which is the 15th, and I can go ahead and paste those to-dos and then reposition them however I would like. So that is a really awesome feature when it comes to digital planning, is you're able to kind of carry your notes forward also allows you to copy different sections of notes and maybe rearrange or re-collaborate all the different notations you took. And I find that very powerful when I'm in a group setting. There's some things that I wanna to contribute to the group and there's some things I wanna keep in my own personal notebooks. And being able to use that lasso tool and copy and paste those annotations is really helpful. So right away, I'm already loving this device. The fact that I got a, a stylus, a keyboard, 
and a piece of hardware that allows me to browse the internet, to go through a handful of different apps for entertainment, allows me to read my Kindle library and listen to my audiobooks, and now has the ability and the power and quality to take handwritten notes. For the price point, this is pretty remarkable in a sense. Guys, we're gonna show you a little more about this device and some of the entertainment features as well as productivity features. But first and foremost, I wanna let you guys know I'm Brandon Bonifer, creator and founder of the Key to Success Planner. And if you're looking for a personal or professional planner that's gonna help change your life, it's gonna help you take the traditional qualities of paper planning and put those into an digital environment where you can take anywhere you go across any different device that uses OneNote, go ahead, check out keytosuccessplanner.com and learn more about it. And if you gained just one thing so far in this video, please do me a favor, like it and subscribe to our channel. We not only cover information about digital planning, we also talk about the tech that's related to it and we feature products and technology that are gonna help enhance your ability to live in this digital world. So let's next talk about how you can make this a productivity tool. All right, so first and foremost, I'm gonna introduce you to Toby. Toby's gonna to help show you a little behind the scenes as we dive into some of the productivity tools in this Amazon Kindle Fire Max 11. Whew, say that 14 times fast. So what I wanna talk about is the Amazon Kindle has a lot of different productivity tools and a lot of new features that are very familiar with in other applications. For example, I can go ahead and open up my calendar and then I can choose to swipe up and then choose to use split screen mode. And then here, I can go ahead and choose an app that I already have open, or go ahead and choose an app from the desktop. In this case, I'm gonna choose OneNote. This is gonna give me the ability to have my calendar that is syncing across my electronic devices here on the left, and give me the ability to manually sync that content over to my daily planner. Now, I can go ahead and I can make that a little bit larger I can make that a little bit smaller. And what's also really cool is I can simply take my finger and swipe all the way across and enter full screen mode of either application. And to do that again, go ahead and just click on split screen. So that was another little widget, a little token of appreciation for this OS that I wasn't expecting. Next thing I wanna talk about is the overall media concept. Now, I'm someone that when I look at these tablets, I want to be able to indulge into some media. And how does this audio sound? Well, we can go ahead and open up Netflix. When we first showed you the form factors device, we showed you that there was two speakers located on it. And I was expecting for the quality of this audio to be eh, less than desirable. But for the size and footprint of this device, I'm actually really impressed by the quality of the audio that comes with it. I also really appreciate that the navigation tools for being able to lower the volume and increase the volume is conveniently located right on the side of the device. And it gives me an on-screen prompt that I can also make adjustments. And from here, I can quickly mute all calls and notifications. So if I wanna enjoy this form of media, I can easily do so and clicking that button, I can bring it right back up. I also have the ability to enter into different media audio levels, choose my call volume, my alarm, as well as my medium. So maybe you wanna have an alarm or notification really high up, but not have your media very loud. And also this has the ability to connect a Bluetooth headset to it. So if you wanna to listen to earbuds, you can easily do that with this device. And obviously you bought a tablet. What does it look like to utilize the Silk browsing system for Amazon? Take a look at how the quality of this internet browser looks. Now it has right across the top that I can view a simplified page. And that's gonna give me more of a tablet-like experience. And I can easily close that and bring it back to a standard desktop view. Overall, using this browser in a little bit of time I did, it's clean, it's slick, it's Silk, right? Uh, and I think that's what Amazon expected. You've seen me talk in other videos about the camera and the placement in these devices. One thing that was unique about this device versus some of the devices I've recently showed you is that the camera that's protruding from the rear of the device is not causing a wobble and easily allowing me to continue writing. And with the addition of the camera, both rear and front facing, we have the ability to not only take pictures, but use powerful apps like Zoom. You can go into the app store of this device, download Zoom, and use this as a tool that you can connect and collaborate with others digitally and virtually. And with the power of split screen, you are able to open up OneNote, 
take notes in your meeting notes page and still participate in the Zoom call. So overall guys, when I look at this new device, I'm actually really excited. The price point is absolutely fabulous. The hardware that you get with it is very creditable for the price point that you're paying and the quality and build of the keyboard and stylus is what I would expect from any tablet manufacturer. Guys, if you learned just one thing in this video, please do me a favor, hit the like button. If you want to learn more about tech and digital planning, please subscribe to our channel. And if you got a question, by all means, go ahead and hit the comments. Myself or somebody in the community will gladly answer those. And if you want to learn more about our planning system, go ahead, hit the description. There's a link that'll carry over to our website so you can learn about how you can professionally and personally grow with the Key Success Planner. Lord willing, guys, I'm going to see you again. Until then, I'm Brandon Bonerfer, and thank you for taking a few minutes with me today. Hey, look at me.